Hello and welcome back to my second part of the or the second major part of the Super Circuit Maker tutorial. I have a lot of videos about this in the playlist. I will some of them will just go through how stuff works and probably most of them will go through more useful builds or interesting builds. But in this second part, I will go through, I will take off where we left last time. Some uh, sticks and useful little blocks. And then finally, well, we'll do some math as well. And finally, go through some of the normal gates that you will use perhaps quite often at least they're the ones that comes with a mod like these all right let's get started over here i think when you're doing a complex circuit that will require connections from one side to another or you can actually build it in several layers so let's take a look at this one and we can use the tiny plates that we also went through last time. So we can do like this and we can place the plates like this. And draw them on a second layer. You can actually do this in up to four layers, I think. Uh, like so. And another layer like this but now if we turn it on like this we need a way to make the signal go vertically and that's where we'll use these redstone impregnated sticks a stick and some redstone and we also have a second variant the bundle stick you make it in the same way so if you take a look from here we play it looks like this you have one uh, line coming in, you place your plate and then have it like this. So if you connect all of these together, then all the layers are connected. And if you want to, you want to use a bundled like this, let's see if we do like that, then purple comes in. And let's do it like this. Actually, you don't need that. Have it one more layer coming out here on top. And then we'll just continue with this wire as well. So 255, 255 in with turn off. Okay. Simple and very useful. You will use this a lot, I think. Now let's go through some of the math. In the last video, I told you that signals in Super Circuit Maker, well, as well as in Redstone Power, can be treated as digital signals or analog signals. Well, basically, you can treat them as both as long as you know what you're doing. We have the power level 255 as a maximum and one or yeah one is the lowest one and uh, so you can have 255 levels and if you do it like this with redstone you will only get in steps of 17 but you can do this in a much more <laughs> flexible way if you will say so first one you will build with tiny plates and redstone tiny piles is the adder the uh, and we'll come back to that the adder is then combined with a redstone torch to make a constant so now we can actually start to to sh demonstrate this if you go into the constant you can set a power level anything from 0 to 255 so if you put it like 60 and you measure here let me remove this it's in a way then you will get 60 as output, like this. Re always remember this. Then if you 
here we have 80 and here we have 20. Use the adder like I've done here and of course we will get 100 out if we add them. We have the subtractor. Just uh, convert your adder to a subtractor. It works exactly the same. Here we have 100, here we have 40 and here we have 60. This part is the main input so it means 100 minus 40 and you can actually take it out in several ways like this 60 and 60 okay you can also convert it to a multiplier and it works exactly like the other ones so if we have the constant 20 here and 5 here well this gives us 100 up here and the final one is the divider here we have 100 and here we have 5 that means take note of this sign 100 divided by 5 is 20 and you could also do if you're i will just give you this tip if you do it like this and we combine it Here we take the input signal 255 and we divide it with itself and this means that we'll get 1 here. So this is actually more useful than you think. Uh, for example in analog, uh, uh, if you want to add, have 1 and multiply it with something, then with regardless of what signal you have in, you can always do like this to have it, to make 1. All right? Remember this when you're making your cool circuits. Now we can actually move on to some other parts. Some of these useful items that we have here, I will go through them not too quickly, I hope, but I won't show you so many uh, applications. First one here, use your redstone lamps with obsidian to make miniature lamps. When they receive a power level of anything positive it will light up like this useful for debugging or, or yeah especially when you're creating your circuits it's very useful or as indicators on a distance perhaps not for general lighting but for as indicators they're great this one is not a lamp this is the quartz resonator from quartz and obsidian. It's basically a delay. It's a, it is not a redstone repeater, uh, even though as it acts like one, it's really not. So because this one you can add and change. So let's start with 20 ticks. This is a standard setting. So here we have an input, we have the resonator and we take the signal and just send it on. As you can see, it was delayed, but the entire signal in is kept. So, and this is roughly one second, or if not exactly one second. And if we set this to another second, 20 ticks is one second, then it will be delayed one second, and then we'll have one second of output. So it will store the signal and then just pass it through after this delay can have it as one tick. It will look like it's the same, but it actually isn't. Like that. If you shift and click, you will have seconds instead of uh, ticks like this. So 20 seconds, perhaps too much, but eight seconds like that. And we'll have a one second right now. There it is, 171 ticks, all right. Eight seconds, I thought five. All right, let's move on. Tiny segmented lamp. This is what I used in the seven segment display. I could actually demonstrate it in more detail now since we're talking about it. 
So here it is. And we'll do one here as well. And something like that. So this is how it looks. If you just turn it on, it will look very similar to the, to, to the normal tiny lamp. But when combined with other, well, then it looks much cooler. If you do like that, and we'll just add a few colors. Like this, add all these colors, because all these colors are in this seven segment display. And you turn it on, it looks really cool. So this is a seven. And this is a three and so on. So it looks really awesome when combined. Highly recommended. All right. So let's move on. Here we have Eye of Enders with Obsidian. This will give you an Ender Pulsar. And as it just as it like it looks. It will constantly tick and be some kind of oscillator or so. I actually don't know the exact timing. Yeah, one second between each pulse. Now it's two seconds between every pulse. All right. Great, let's move on. Here we have a quite interesting thing. The Glowstone Exciter from Glowstone and Obsidian. If we flip this lever. Every time it reach, it gets an, um, a signal, it might change its state, if I understand correctly. So there's a signal. 255, we can actually do it like this instead, to make it more clear. If we flip it, sometimes things happen, and sometimes not. So now it turned on. And now on the red next pulse, it will maybe turn off as it did, but sometimes it doesn't. So very interesting. We can actually connect it to this one just to be fun. If we change this one to perhaps one second instead. Like that. Okay, interesting thing. I haven't used it yet myself, but I'm sure there are occasions when you could use this. Remember the these ones when we traveled vertically and we had these tiny plates and used them? Well, here's another variant of it. If you combine it like this with obsidian, then you get the non-conductive tiny plate. And it has three modes. Let me just, if you just use a screwdriver to right click, you can see it has three modes. So this is the first one, it was white. All right, so if I turn it on down here, then you can see that the signal passed through going up. But if we turn the signal on up here, it will not go down. Here is the second mode. If you turn it on up here, it will go down, but it will not go up. And the third mode is a blocking mode. So here I'm using a normal tiny plate and we have the magenta here, right? So when we turn this on, then you can see that the torch is turned on and then we'll get the oh, right, opposite, turn it off. So when this is off, then we have on here and on up here. So they are similar. But if I change this to the tiny uh, non-conductive plate, like this, this is the blocking mode. So it goes up, down and stop. So now we can have a signal up here and when we turn this on, we will not get the signal transferred to the upper side.
good when you are doing complex and uh, tall circuits, I guess, because the redstone torch is too high, two blocks high. Next item, we have, oops, I forgot the recipe. There we are. Here's the recipe, tiny plates and a chest and some redstone will give you the inventory scanner. It looks like this. So when placed on a redstone circuit, it will check the contents like a comparator does on the, inside a chest. So here we have power level of 51. It's because I have a few stacks here. Now if you check, I have 34. It works up here as well. And now I should have only 17. Yeah, perfect. So if you just do like this and change, well, 102. Great. So, and one final, one final thing. We have a block update detector and it will output the redstone signal even if we do like this, if you just place anything like here, block update, it will output an, uh, a redstone signal. Works better with this one actually. So whenever anything grows, we'll get a redstone signal. And you can also output it onto these, like here. Right, simple to craft and quite useful when you're automating perhaps growing crops or other things. All right, I think we have covered every item in the mod at this point. Um, but this is only a fraction of what you will do with a mod. Uh, so I recommend that you check the playlist for more useful and interesting builds. But as a, a final part, I will just go through some of the uh, finished circuits that are already in the mod that you can play with directly. So this one I covered in the first video. This is an OR gate. It means that if you have an input on any side, you will have an output. Doesn't matter how many, as long as you have any input, you will have an output. Next one, the AND gate. So the, it will require three of these redstone torches and as you know they act as inverters. So let's see, state ON and this is ON, then we'll have an output signal because then this will be ON ON and this will be OFF and that's inverted over here. If we have any one turned on, turn on and one off, or both off, then we will have zero output. The opposite is of course the NAND without the final inverter over here. So let's see, this is off and this is on. So off off gives you an output, off on gives you an output, but on on will give you nothing out. The NOT gate, I mentioned it already, it will just invert the signal. If it's off, you will have OUT as ON. And then we have the NOR, it's a combination of that one and the NOT gate. So OFF, OFF, OFF and you will have an output here. If you have anything turned on or several turned on, you will have nothing out. The XOR or the exclusive OR means that you will need to have one turned on to have an output, but not both and not both off. So if both are off, like here, you will have nothing out. If one is on, you will have an output, the other one, output, but both, nothing out. We have a pulse, like this one, that will only emit, on a redstone signal, it will emit one pulse, 
like this. And then it will be turned off automatically. Okay. As you could see it when I played with it, uh, the T-latch, or also called the T-flip-flop, will change the output signal on a redstone pulse. So from this side, and the lever works this way, so if you give it a signal, it will flip. So signal, signal, signal. And it doesn't matter from which side. And the final one is the set and reset latch, or the RS latch <laughs> called here. Um, it will have, if you're doing the input from one side, it will have one output. And then you can have the input as how many times you want, it doesn't change. But doing it from the other side, the output will jump to the other side. Oh, off. Now it can turn back again. On and on is not a valid state. So that's a few. There are a few more here that I don't need to go through, I think. Um, Again, check the video description and the playlist for more useful builds. And as always, if you have any questions, you know where to put them. So thanks for watching and I hope to see you in the next one. Take care and bye bye.